What's up everybody? Today I am reviewing The Traveling Vampire Show by Richard Lehman. This is the fourth book that I've read by Richard Lehman. And just to give you a quick little background of my experience with his work, I first read Funland by him several years ago. I believe I was in my teens. I borrowed it from the library. Didn't know anything about him at the time. And I, from what I remember about that book, I did not like it at all. And I wanted to, in the last few years, I wanted to check out more by Richard Lehman. Of course, he is a very popular horror author, as many of you probably already know. And the next book that I read by him was In the Dark. And I read that one, I think, two or three years ago now. And I did not like that one either. <laughs> I didn't completely hate it, I but I didn't really care for it. But I wanted to try something else by him because there were some aspects to his writing and his books that I did like. His books were very fast paced and just quick, easy reads. I flew right through them. Um, this one included, even though his novels tend to be um, about the average length of a novel, three to 400 pages, sometimes more. I always find myself just breezing right through them. They're just quick, easy reads. And then I think last year or the year before I read Dark Mountain. I think it was last year. And that was my third novel by his. And I like that one slightly more than the previous two that I read. I think I gave it like two and a half out of five stars. Something like that. Um, but I still wasn't overall satisfied with it. So I thought I would give Richard Lehman one more chance. And this is the one that I tried. The Traveling Vampire Show. And this is one of his later books that he wrote. Before he passed away. And I believe this also won a Bram Stoker Award. So this is the only novel he wrote, as far as I'm aware, that actually won an award. And from what I read online, reviews and such on Goodreads, this seems to be one of his more popular books. So I was excited going into it, thinking I'm finally going to read one of his better books. Thinking I'm going to read one that's actually satisfying, one that I actually really like. But that's not exactly the case. <laughs> Excuse me. So, the Traveling Vampire Show, what is this book about? It's basically a coming-of-age story, or it's supposed to be. It's about a group of friends, these teenagers, um, high schoolers. They're 16 years old. There's two boys named uh, Rusty and Dwight. And then they also have a girl in their group named uh, Slim. And I believe they're all 16 years of age. And there are these flyers posted around their town advertising the Traveling Vampire Show. And... The Traveling Vampire Show is held in like this big empty field that is has a bunch of like legends surrounding it and myths and stuff and a lot of bad things have happened there. And this book takes place during the course of one day, I believe. This entire 390 page novel takes place in one day, which is, or like two days actually, I guess. But most of it is in one day, which is kind of weird. A lot of the timeline and stuff that happens in here doesn't really seem to add up and but I don't know anyway <laughs> they go out out to this field to like kind of scout things out and just um, see how the vampire show is going to be set up that kind of thing and I don't even know where to begin or how to explain it what happens exactly I'll put it this way it takes 300 pages literally 300 pages for them to actually get to the Traveling Vampire Show. Out of this 390 page novel, they don't get to the Traveling Vampire Show until page 300. So what happens in the first 300 pages, you ask? That's a good question. And <laughs> I don't really have a good answer for you. So I understand a coming of age story such as this, where the kids are just kind of getting into mischief and just doing things that teenagers do, getting into trouble and all just sort of random hijinks. I understand that it's going to be a little bit meandering and um, a little bit aimless kind of. But this one is very, very aimless and meandering and does not seem to have any sense of plot whatsoever for those first 300 pages. I can't even tell you what the characters <laughs> were doing the first 300 pages. They go out to the field, um, they get attacked by like a big dog, and they're like uh, camping out, hiding out on the roof of this like uh, snack shack, I think it is, and they end up escaping, and then they go home, and they they grill burgers, they talk to 
Lee, who is the wife of one of the main character's brothers, and she buys tickets for them so they can go to the vampire show later. And, yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of really weird, bizarre scenes in here where not really a lot is happening, and it's just really dialogue heavy the characters just interacting with one another and i don't know <laughs> i don't even know what to say it i was getting very irritated by just how uneventful this book was really and one thing that i'm just going to jump into this right now one thing that probably a lot of you already know about richard layman is there's a lot of sexual content in his books and this one from what I've heard, isn't as bad as some of his others, and I will admit that there weren't any real graphic, like, sex scenes in it or anything like that. However, this book is just as disgusting and pervy as any other book that I've read by him, if not more so in some cases. So, it is understandable, I guess, that these characters, the two boys specifically, they're teenagers, they're horny, whatever, like, that's <laughs> understandable, but this book is just way too excessive with the descriptions of women and their body parts and just the characters are constantly horny for like no reason at all. And even in like life or death situations where just it is just very, very excessive, very pervy. And it was really, really irritating and disgusting and <laughs> I was getting sick of it fast. I don't even remember some of his other books irritating me the way this one did. Dark Mountain, of course, had some of that stuff in there too, but I don't remember it annoying, being annoying and as grating as this one was. This one, honestly, might even be worse. So, yeah, what happens in this book is just a lot of nonsense for 300 pages, and then finally the characters get to the Traveling Vampire Show at midnight, and they go and sit out in the bleachers. And the vampire show is basically where there's this woman who is supposed to be a vampire. Whether she is actually a vampire or not. It's kind of ambiguous. It doesn't ever officially say. And she's in this cage. And they bring volunteers down from the audience and put her in the cage with her. And they have to sort of fight for like five minutes the vampire tries to suck their blood and they have to try to prevent it they're not given any sort of weapons or anything they just have to try to fend off the vampire for five whole minutes and if they last five minutes they win five hundred dollars and so could various contestants go down and fight against valeria or i think that's how you pronounce her name valeria the vampire and from there of course valeria is like this beautiful busty woman and uh there's a lot more really weird sexual stuff that happens during this whole sequence at the very end. And yeah, it was just <laughs> not not satisfying at all. Not at all what I was expecting out of this. And I did not like this book. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just kind of rambling and ranting about it a little bit. I'm having a hard time collecting my thoughts because of how much this book just irritated me. And... I, what I don't understand is how this won a Bram Stoker Award. This book won a Bram Stoker Award somehow. I don't I don't get it. <laughs> There's this really has no plot whatsoever until like the very end at the Vampire Show, the last ninety pages of the book or so. And one one of the things too that bothered me about this, and is this is something that Layman does. This is just like his has some in all of his books, not just this one is it's not believable at all. So a characters make a lot of really strange decisions in here. Just decisions and they have certain attitudes and act in certain ways that's not convincing at all. And if the story's not believable or convincing, I have a hard time getting into it or enjoying it. And this one is no exception. There's just a lot of really bizarre decisions in here made by the characters. A lot of the scenarios just feel like they would never happen in a million years. And this is a story that's supposed to be kind of realistic as like a coming of age story. There's nothing really overtly supernatural going on in here. Again, the whole vampire thing at the end is there's some ambiguity surrounding it of whether or not the vampire is real. But for the most part, this story feels like it's supposed to be 
um, pretty realistic. It's narrated by Dwight, the main character, in first person. And it takes place in, like, the 60s, I believe. And he's sort of narrating the story to us as it's already happened. And I think we're supposed to be able to relate to the characters. And it's supposed to have, like, this nice, uh, just kind of grounded feel to it. But all of just the bizarre scenarios in here, just unbelievable characters. And it just all takes me right out of the story. It makes me not really care what happens because I'm not convinced that any of it could have happened. <laughs> so, yeah. It's something that, again, I've noticed in his previous books, but this one I think is the worst that I've read for that. It's just, it doesn't make sense. So, The Traveling Vampire Show by Richard Lehman. I know that there's probably, a, obviously he's a very popular author. I know there's probably a lot of people out there that like him. This is just my opinion of him. Um, if you enjoy reading his books, if you're a Richard Lehman fan, that's perfectly fine. I'm not judging you. <laughs> but I have decided that Richard Lehman is not a horror author. He writes really weird, bizarre, and twisted erotica <laughs> with elements of horror to it. Very few light horror elements to it. <laughs> and so I just feel very just disgusted by this book, irritated by it. And just the constant sexual stuff is just too much. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the horror. And so I don't think Richard Lehman is the author for me eventually. And again, there are some aspects few but there are some aspects to his writing that I like again he's very fast paced um even though this one is very aimless and meandering um there just are a lot of moments where it's kind of engaging I guess and he just keeps you reading cliffhanger chapter endings and just uh straight to the point doesn't waste a lot of time uh I lie there <laughs> actually I take that back there are parts where he describes things in excruciating detail and I don't understand why. I'll just give you a brief example. This isn't an exact quote from the book, but this is a scene from the book. Um, Slim and Dwight are like grilling hamburgers and hot dogs, and they're like hanging out at their house. And Richard Lehman goes into excruciating detail over just the most mundane, minor things. They're going into the kitchen to get food. And Richard Lehman will write, again, not quote for quote, I'm sort of... Uh, making this up a little bit but this is kind of what happens they go into the kitchen to get like the condiments and stuff and it will describe uh dwight goes into the kitchen opens the fridge door pulls out the ketchup bottle takes the cap off the ketchup bottle squeezes the ketchup bottle pours the ketchup on the hot dog hands the hot like it just goes into the most excruciating detail over the stupidest things that don't need it instead of just saying they went into the kitchen to get the food or to get the ketchup or whatever like <laughs> it's like why 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 is that necessary and it's not too pervasive it wasn't like descriptions like that throughout the entire book but every once in a while one of them would pop out at me and it would just oh it would make me so mad i'm like why do we need an entire paragraph explaining about the character getting the ketchup bottle or just these different things and i'm just like <laughs> i don't know guys it I don't know what else to say about this book. It Richard Lehman is not the author for me. I've read four of his books now, and this one will most definitely be my last. So yeah, yeah, those are just my thoughts on Richard Lehman. If you enjoy this author, that's perfectly fine. I'm not judging you. It's just my opinion. There are some aspects I can see to these books that would be enjoyable. Again, they're fast paced, just kind of trashy, quick reads. Some of them do have a decent amount of action and horror to them. Unfortunately, I do not think this is one of them, even though it won a Bram Stoker Award. Again, that's way beyond me, but <laughs> anyways, I give this book a one out of five stars. I'm very disappointed with it, and I don't know what else to say. I think that's, I'm just going to end the rant here, I think. Those are my thoughts for Richard Lehman into the, or the Traveling Vampire Show. So, if you guys want to share your thoughts on Richard Lehman uh go ahead feel free to down in the comments that's pretty much all i have for today guys so thanks for watching this rant i mean review peace